Hi, this is Josh, pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. Going to talk about the medication naproxen. I'm going to discuss some of the uses, the dosage, the warnings, interactions, and using alcohol when you're taking naproxen. The topic specifically I will cover is what is naproxen, uh, what are the uses and dosages, uh, common uses and dosages, some of the side effects, the warnings, interactions, and of course alcohol. As with all my videos, informational purposes only here, not to serve as a substitute for your healthcare provider. Always speak to your doctor, your pharmacist, if you have questions, concerns about your medications. What is naproxen? It is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or oftentimes abbreviated NSAID. The mechanism of action, it inhibits an enzyme called cyclooxygenase 1 and 2, sometimes abbreviated COX-1 and 2, C-O-X. Um, and those, when you inhibit those enzymes, we end up getting a reduction in the inflammation in the body uh, that helps with pain and it also reduces fever. Some of the brand names in the U.S. include uh, the over-the-counter version Aleve, Anaprox, Naproxen. And most stores have their store-branded generic, their all-day pain relief, or something of that nature. You just need to look at the active ingredients and see that it's Naproxen. So what are the uses? It's used to treat pain, specific pain due to inflammation. So we can see gout flares, bursitis, arthritis, tendonitis. We see it sometimes used for headaches, for dental pain, uh, just many different kinds of pain that may have an inflammatory component seems to help with those sorts of things. Over the counter, it's 220 milligram tablets, generally one to two every 12 hours. Um, often you'd be sure that you read the label specifically. Typically, most people are going to shoot for that one every 12 hours. Prescription version, generally uh, 500 milligrams twice a day. Often the ceiling dose is considered to be around 1,000 milligrams per day. That's going to vary um, depending on your condition, what your healthcare provider decides is an appropriate dose for you. It is best to take it with food or milk or antacids as that can reduce some of the potential for stomach issues. It starts working 30 to 60 minutes after you take that dose. Most common side effects, uh, so in the 1% to 10% category, not many when you use it short term. Uh, short term, for most people, uh, very little issues. Uh, we can see some swelling and fluid retention occur, dizziness, drowsiness, headache, um, rash or itching can occur. That would generally be a reason to stop that and let your health care healthcare provider know if you start to have some rash or itchiness, stomach upset, heartburn, nausea, uh, ringing in the ears, and difficulty breathing can occur. Other side effects, we're talking in the less than 1% category. Uh, again, rash, sometimes it can be very severe, which would require um, that you seek medical attention. Stomach and colon bleeding, that's typically when this medicine is used long term. Uh, it increases the risk of ulcers and lacerations in the colon. Liver problems can occur. Again, we're, we're talking rare, less than 1%. Pancreatitis, vomiting, some blood disorders, and even uh, problems with vision. Uh, the warnings. Now, folks at increased risk of heart attack and stroke generally not advise that you use NSAIDs like naproxen. Um, these NSAIDs do increase the risk that you can have heart attack and stroke, increases the risk of ulcers and bleeding in the stomach and intestines. Uh, it may impair kidney function. Um, that's something to be very mindful for. Most of the time, uh, the impaired kidney function will reverse once the medication is stopped. Caution with asthma. Certain asthmatics are sensitive to NSAIDs, and they may have difficulty breathing when they're using them. Uh, rare skin reactions like we talked about. And it's not for use after heart surgery or heart attack. It is not, it's recommended that you not use any NSAIDs after heart surgery, after heart attack, really increases the risk of sudden death. So that's a serious warning that you, you need to take seriously. And it's not for use uh, during pregnancy. Uh, some of the major interactions, there are other interactions you make sure uh, you always speak to your pharmacist, your doctor, make sure it's going to be all right with the medications that you're using. But we need to be cautious with blood pressure medications. NSAIDs, like naproxen, can increase 
uh, blood pressure, and as we already talked about, it can increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. That is probably part of the mechanism there is by the increase in blood pressure. It can affect anything that has a quote-unquote blood thinning effect, so anticoagulants, antiplatelets, anything that you're on that can prevent clots, uh, naproxen and other NSAIDs can increase the risk that you could develop bleeding from that. It may also counteract, you know, if you're, if you're taking these, you may have some cardiovascular issues already, and NSAIDs may increase the risk of problems. If you're taking the prescription lithium, uh, NSAIDs have been known to increase the levels of that. You need to be cautious with diuretics or water pills. Um, the NSAIDs can reduce the benefit of a diuretic. Again, if you're using a diuretic, there's a good chance you have you have some heart issues. Um, now, NSAIDs are sometimes used in people with, with heart issues and heart problems because they may also have arthritis or they have some pain, and they, it can be used in these people. It needs to be used very cautiously. You need to be uh, in close contact with your healthcare provider so they can monitor for side effects. SSRIs, antidepressants like fluoxetine, paroxetine, sertraline, citalopram, escitalopram, there is an increased risk of bleeding when you're on an SSRI and taking an NSAID. So this doesn't mean that you can't use them together. They, you just need to talk to your, your health care provider. Understand that using them together does increase the risk of bleeding. Uh, also, with tricyclic antidepressants, we worry about that increased risk of bleeding as well. Alcohol, it is not recommended that you consume alcohol while you're using naproxen. Alcohol can be hard on the stomach. Naproxen can be hard on the stomach. So it increases the risk, uh, especially the GI bleeding, bleeding ulcers, and as well as other side effects. That being said, the the occasional drink uh, is, is usually all right for most people using naproxen, but that should be a discussion that you have with your doctor um, simply because bleeding in the stomach or intestines can be a very serious condition. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate this video and videos like it. Uh, like this video if you like it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And if you have questions about this, go ahead and ask it in the comments below. I will do my best to answer it for you. Thanks for watching.